What is remote music? Well, in simple terms, it involves learning music over a distance using technology such as YouTube, Google Hangouts or Skype. Let's explore this idea further and see what the experts think. Technology has its place in music tuition, certainly. I mean, we you know, the school's developing you know, virtual learning environments and I'm uploading videos, short videos about how to play certain pieces for certain levels. But for my, in my mind, there's no substitute for that personal contact with the teacher. There's a lot of educational research that suggests that if you are working alongside a professional musician, you know, especially as a younger person working alongside a professional musician, you get so much more out of that through personal contact rather than just over something like Skype or a computer video link or something along, along, along those lines. And a good teacher will annotate will annotate the score, annotate you know, the, the music, see where it's, what's not going right, what's good, you know, what needs to be brought out more. And again, that's, you know, that's harder to do, I think, over a, over a distance. Yeah. In uni days, we've kind of created music over Skype. So I might have been talking with a friend of mine who was also in Brighton, just different parts of the town. And rather than just talking over the phone, we're trying to make pieces and we use Skype and I'm saying, look, I've got this call or something like that. But I've never taught or had a lesson, but it's still been a productive tool. I mean, some people will always but work better with teachers. It's, it really depends on the individual. Like, I think if I was, if I was going to learn over a conference, which I do with other aspects of my life. I try and learn stuff on the internet, what have you. Stocks and shares, that's something I do in my spare time. I, I, can, I can be focused enough to benefit as if, as if I was there. When you're designing technology, and this goes for anything, you have to design it with a really good knowledge of what happens in the situation you're trying to advance or provide in a different way. But um, there are things that are essential and that you can do remotely and it's, it, again it's about looking at what do they do. Um, students at different level of playing do different things on different instruments so young violinists I think is more difficult but very advanced students who have gone beyond learning their toolkit and can use their instrument and can understand guidance on move your hand on the fret or twist your wrist or hold your bow using this position instead. You move on to the subjectivity of the piece, that's when remote music tuition comes into its own because if the audio quality is really good, then actually they can do that almost without seeing, without visuals. It helps and it helps bond the relationship a little bit, but actually the audio becomes more important. I think it's about making sure that you can do some of what you would do in a lesson well um, so that you can use it as a top up and that has to be around good audio and actually being able to assess the playing. Really good tutors can even hear if a hand or a bow position isn't right, just through listening, they don't even need to see it. They can hear it in the quality of the sound, which is amazing. There are different technologies that exist which can be combined to make a remote music more reliable. For example, video and audio transmissions would be essential factors to include in a remote music system. In our example, a two-way video feed is used to provide a visual interaction between the tutor and the student. There are also music reader applications which can be synchronised so that the tutor and the student can make annotations on the music sheet in real time. In case the video or audio quality decreases, there is a chat feature below the screen to allow the mentor and the student to communicate during the lesson. Out of lesson time, they can also send and receive messages regarding previous or future sessions. A combination of all these features could enhance a remote music lesson and covers most of the essentials. However, this is the most suited towards intermediate to advanced students. With current technology, there are certain limitations such as internet speeds and bandwidth capabilities which are necessary to transmit high quality audio and video. In the future, we hope to see advancements and increased availability of technology. For example, super fast fibre optic broadband will become much cheaper and available for home users which will decrease the chance of video and audio latency. Or maybe the possibility of virtual reality or the use of holograms could completely change the experience of remote music.